So let's log out of R1 and get back to R2. And the thing I wanted to show you here is we've set up SSH and there's some misunderstanding about this. When you set up SSH, you do not disable Telnet by default. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to disable it. Cause so at this point I can just up here, I think I have it here. I can Telnet in and I can use the same username password because it's defined on the local username password database. And now I'm in via Telnet. So what I've done there is I've actually blown away the advantage that I have with SSH. I've connected to this device using Telnet, and when I'm doing that, Packet Lab with the password of Packet Lab is being passed in clear text on the wire. So a hacker can go ahead and do a capture of this and get my username password and be able to access R1 and get up to all kinds of shenanigans. So we want to avoid that. Once we've enabled SSH, there's not many reasons why you would want to have Telnet available as well, especially with you know modern platforms and iOS versions. So let's go ahead and log out of here and jump back over to the console connection on R1 and we're going to configuration mode and I'm going to go under the VTY lines zero through four. You could specify per each line if you want to get goofy on it, but we're just going to do all the lines. And what we're looking for here is to tie down which protocols we're going to allow through the VTY lines. And to do that, we do transport and I can invoke Cisco iOS help. And you can see that we can do this in the in, inbound direction or outbound direction. We're going to specify inbound with input. There's also a preferred command. I'll touch on that in a different lesson. Uh, but in this case, we're going to do input spell it right and here's the list of protocols that you can filter here by default all protocols are allowed so by default you're allowing telnet which we've seen SSH um, our login and then some that I'm not even familiar with um, mop uh, you can you can say don't let anybody in here that's ultimate security but now when you specify a protocol what you're doing is you're overriding the default of all and you're saying only allow these protocols. So you could put SSH um, and then you can see it gets taken out of the option. So you could you can put multiple in if I wanted to allow MOP, if I wanted to allow PAD, I could do that. I just really want SSH. So I'm going to hit enter, I'm going to pop over to R2 and now when I try to Telnet to R1 it should be refused. Booyah! Right there. So now it's saying yeah, you can't get into my VTY lines using Telnet, but if I SSH, I should be able to get in, and I am able to get in. So this is an optional step. I would say in 99% of your implementations, you're going to want to tie this down to SSH, because otherwise, why leave the Telnet hole open? You're using SSH most likely because you want to encrypt your communications to get around some of the security holes with uh, Telnet. So it doesn't make much sense to keep them both on. It is kind of a thing that you have to keep in mind because you will successfully be able to test this with SSH and it will work, but you've basically left a door open into your router. So let's take a quick look at the SSH versionings and how Cisco handles that. If you do a show, SSH. You can see here when we logged in from R2 we just said let's use SSH as our protocol. Let's use this username and we want to connect to this device. So now when I issued the show SSH command uh, the version is 1.99 and it says that OSSH v1 server connections are running. So when we do this by default Cisco runs in something called compatibility mode which means that it can use either SSH version 1 and SSH version 2. As I said in the theory portion, these are incompatible. They can't talk to each other. You can't run both. You have to run one or the other. What this means here is that it's capable of using both, but because no SSH v1 server connections are running, it's actually using version 2. So when you see that 1.99, that means that both are available. So now let's go ahead and log out, and we're going to SSH back in again. And if you issue the question mark, let's first set up our username. Let's first spell it correctly. And you can see you can you can give multiple arguments to this. V right here, hyphen V, is to specify the IP, I'm sorry, the SSH protocol version. And we can see that we can use either one or two. So in this case, let's specify one. And then go to R1. So we're logged in, we specified from our client, which is R2 in this case, that we want to, whoops, that we want to use SSH version one. So now when we look at this, it's interesting because it has a slightly different uh, output for this command. If we scroll back up here, we can see this had a lot more stuff going on here. It had the encryption, the HMAC. Here those aren't, well, we do have the encryption, it's triple DES. But uh, the most important part is no SSH v2 
server connections are running. So you're running version 1 here. When you see 1.5, that means that you're using SSH version 1, that it's technically capable of version 1 only. So if you have an old iOS code on there, uh, this could come into play. If you have code that's older than 12.3.4, say you're running you know, 12.2 code, and you try to SSH, because it runs in compatibility mode, if you don't specify a version, it's going to use version 1, and you could tell that no version 2 connections are running. Um, but if you were to try this from R2 specifying version 2, which we'll do in just a second here, if this was older code not capable of running um, version 2, it would not allow you to connect. So for the sake of completeness, let's go ahead and do the same command, but we're going to specify version 2. And you can see here that we're running pure version 2. So the differences are, if you see 1.99, that means that both are available. Uh, but you should be able to tell which one's running, because it'll tell you that no you know, SSH v1 or SSH v2 are running. And usually you only going to see SSH v1 there. If you specify v1, you can see that it gives you version 1.5 for some reason. But it goes and tells you that v2 is not running. If you specify v2, like we did here, you're going to get the pure and straight version 2.0 and it will also tell you hey you're not running version 1. So there's a little bit of confusion with that and I have no clue why Cisco went with the numbering system that they did. I, I guess I can see what 1.99 is. I don't know why 1.5 but whatever. Just if this comes up in, in the uh, exam or you know it gets confusing in real life like you know somebody says what version of SSH are you running? You'll be able to tell them. Alright quick jump back to R1 here. Uh, what I did here was I went and I enabled both the IP HTTP server and the IP HTTP secure server. What this is doing is this is allowing you to access your Cisco router via HTTP or HTTPS uh, for configuration. Generally I like to turn this off, but I just want to show you two things real quick here. Let's take a look at our VTY line. I've seen this on the web and I've also heard this from people that they believe that when you tie down your input transport protocols to just SSH, remember when we did that we were no longer able to telnet, that that means that the only protocol that you can use to access this router is going to be SSH, and that's not true. We could prove this here, are we on R2, okay, telnet 10.1.12.1. Uh, quick tip, this is really cool and you use this quite a bit, I have a different lesson on this, but if you want to test TCP ports, you can do that by issuing the telnet command, the device that you want to go to, and then it'll give you these options down here like POP2, login, FTP, www is the one we're looking for. What this is doing is emulating this. It's going to say, I'm going to send traffic to this device on TCP port X. In this case, we're going to use 80. So remember, we turned on the HTTP server if, you know, the rumor were true that, you know, just uh, limiting your VTY input transport protocol to SSH, then this should be blocked. It shouldn't be allowed by the device, and it is. So this isn't really too dramatic, but if you see this open here, that means that the device is listening on this port. So in this case, it's listening on port 80, which is HTTP. Uh, usually just typing anything in here will get you out of there. And I could show you what would happen if, uh, so it's not using Telnet, which is, uh, I'm sorry, TCP. Wow. FTP, which is 21. You could do either. You can either type in FTP or specify the port. And this is what you would expect to get if it was not listening on that port. It's going to say it's refused. So let's go ahead and do the same thing just for completeness sake on port 443, which is HTTPS or secure HTTP. It opens. So we could see that, damn it. <laughs> oh, it got, okay, we got closed out. Wow, somebody needs to put the no IP uh, domain lookup on this router. Anywho, uh, basically, you know, that's just it's a little bit of a side rant. I just wanted to uh, dispel that, that that doesn't mean that, you know, HTTP is not available because those communications don't go through the VTY line. So you can tell what can and can't be filtered on the VTY line by simply invoking the question mark here. Uh, as I said before, all of these are enabled by default, and these are the guys that you can filter. So logically, these are the guys that are allowed. Don't see HTTP or HTTPS in there.